So today we're going to be going over components and mostly just default components and loading those in and the limitations that those have. So I've opened up a default architectural template project here and I'm going to come up to my architecture tab and hit component and there's some default families loaded in here of just random things. I'm not sure what made them choose these items but it's a nice little kind of smorgasbord of, of options here. You've got a desk, some muttons, a parking space, some trees, um, a support, railing support, um, all sorts of kind of weird and different stuff. Um, but this desk and the default desk that comes in here is a good example of something that has a lot of limitations to it. So let's say we, we, we use this. We're going to use this 60 by 30 desk. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to place this uh, in my project. I'm going to go to my 3D view here so I can I can kind of see what's going on and I'm actually going to hide these that way I can zoom to fit on this desk. Okay so I've got this desk and it touts that it's fully parametric because it shows me all of these options of changing the depth, the height, the leg height, and the width. That's fantastic great I can make this whatever size I want let's say I make it six foot and hit apply okay that works okay obviously it makes this the same size and then it's just gonna expand the knee space underneath to make that happen if I change the leg height let's say I make this nine inches hit apply it's gonna go ahead and jump that up if I change the height and this is where actually if you notice we're already getting issues so over here on the right hand side we changed that height none of our handles moved and all of a sudden this top drawer is really really small that's a poorly built model which is really unfortunate that Autodesk would have some of their default families not be a quality built model so even if I come in here and edit this and say okay now I want to change the height to four feet and hit apply none of my handles move this moves up this should move up with this this should stay kind of towards the top or centered on the on the actual thing same thing over here none of these change size just the top one is the only one that changes size and unfortunately this isn't something that is new to 2019 this has been a default Revit desk for I can't even remember how many versions and unfortunately they still have yet to go in and actually fix their own model that's been built um, which reflects kind of poorly on on Autodesk and their in-house team to build a decent model for their own software which is kind of unfortunate but this is a good example of just because it's a default model in Revit does not mean it's a great great piece of work or a great family to use. Um, anymore, there are certain models that you'll find that are default that work just fine. Um, the more you use them, the more you'll figure that out. Uh, but then there are also ones that I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. So you'll, you'll kind of discover those as you go along uh, in their limitations here and there. But for the most part, Nowadays, I tend to build most of my own families and go from there. Uh, that way I know how they're built. I know they're built properly. I know how to get in there and edit them. If for whatever reason I want to go in and change something about a family of mine, I kind of know how they're built and how I operate and I can go in and, and uh, modify that stuff. Um, but for the most part, there are certain families that you can use out of the default and then there are some that aren't so great so <clears throat> just be aware of that I would also say that there are plenty of websites out there where you can download content that other users have created I would be wary of that as well um, some of them are fantastic there are people out there that make absolutely amazing models um, some of them I have no idea how they managed to pull off what they pulled off but uh, some people have have built some absolutely incredible models that you can download for free or there are some websites where you can pay for them and actually get uh, get some really nice models that way as well but there are also people out there loading 
pretty much junk models on there. Um, a quick story of one that I had, I downloaded a light fixture. Light fixtures especially, even manufacturer created light fixtures can be terrible. Um, I had a light fixture that I downloaded from the manufacturer and the light source was actually into the ceiling rather than in the fixture itself and so it wouldn't emit any light. Um, so even the people who should be the ones quality controlling their own stuff, it, sometimes they just don't. Um, but there are plenty of problems that can arise from a bad, a bad family model. There are family models that if you load them in and they're corrupted, they'll corrupt your entire file. That's no fun. Um, there are family models that will affect the lighting in your model. They'll affect materials. There's all sorts of ways that a bad family can impact your model in ways that you would never want to happen. So. If, you've, if you become adept at building your own families, I would stick with that and build your own library up. That way you know how they're built and you know they're built to a certain quality standard that you've set. So let's say we get rid of this and let's go back to our level one plan here. Um, so if we come up to component and we want to load in something different. Maybe we don't want that desk. Maybe we don't want any of this stuff that's in here. We can come up here to load family. And load family opens a dialog box here that defaults to this US Imperial Library. And this US Imperial Library has a whole bunch of folders in it. And these are all of your sort of default out of the box families that come with Revit. So let's say we want some sort of furniture. So we'll go under furniture and we'll say a table and there is that desk that is already preloaded in we could say we want a coffee table an end table maybe a round dining table let's just go with this round dining table so we'll go ahead and double click that and we can load that in so if a family has built-in options it's going to come in with those options already built in here so we've got our 36 inch 60 and 84 that doesn't mean those are the only ones that you can have because we can go into our edit type and change the diameter and the height and the materials and stuff like that there. But that is essentially how you can load in more families uh, within this, this sort of uh, default file here. If you've got a bunch of families that you've created uh, that you want to load in, like I have under mine, I have a Revit families uh, entire folder of stuff that I have built. Um, I even have a void folder of things that are kind of null and void. So usually that's full of appliances that are no longer, they're out of date. Um, but I'll make appliances that are built to the specs uh, that that our clients have picked and that sort of thing. Um, those can even have locations of where the power source needs to be and all of that for cabinet drawings and shop drawings and things like that. So I have my own uh, sort of filing system of how this all kind of comes together and how I've built some of my family. So having a folder like this can be can be kind of nice um, as you build up more and more of, of what you're using. So that's a general overview of the basics of components and loading new ones in and kind of the limitations that can come with those.